So I had a buddy reach out to me and say, find me a Black Raven. I did. I went through Whiskey River Trading Company's auction site and found a Black Raven. He wanted a handle that really stood out but was still kind of classy. I came up with this idea of taking a piece of hickory in between two pieces of walnut, basically a full laminated handle. In order to do this, I went over to my buddy's wood shop and used his grizzly planer and belt sander. Spent some time setting up, trying to figure out how I was going to do this. I've never laminated a full piece of plank like this. Once I figured out what side of the wood I wanted exposed, I immediately glued it up. Believe it or not, clamping this up actually took a bit of trial and error. Every time I clamped something, there was so much glue, the wood would slide all over the place. So I had to clamp one on the lateral side to keep everything from sliding. So after a full day of drying, I came in and popped all of these off one by one. Now being fully sanded and laminated, I went back to my shop and started cutting out the shape of the handle. After the shape was cut, the next step was to mark the eye. So I've used so many different methods on shaping the eye of an axe. This method, I decided to use a draw knife. But more recently, I've decided I kind of like using a rasp. It gets a lot more material off faster in my opinion and it allows you to have a little bit more control sometimes with a draw knife you can get a little carried away and take off a little too much and then pfft, your eyes toast pretty much the handles toast I decided to take a piece of zebra wood and cut it down the middle to make a matchbook set and glue it up as the palm swell I was really digging the idea of having contrast colors throughout the whole handle. You have the hickory and the walnut on the main handle, then the palm swell, two colors, were being given through one piece of zebra wood. I didn't have a good video of this process, but when I first have a handle, I use a really large rasp to whittle down all of the corners. Then I come down to this part of the process using a really fine file and rounding everything. As you can see, using a really fine file allows me to get this really snug fit around the eye.
using my trusty shopsmith, I cut the curve. So after picking zebra wood and then realizing that I had a contrast between walnut and hickory for the handle, I thought picate would be the perfect touch for the wedge. Now for my favorite part of any axe build, the wedge. And before you put in the comments, yes, I had a block supporting the handle at the bottom. You can see me bending over there and adjusting that. I have a love-hate relationship with sanding. On one hand, it's the best part of the process. You're getting towards the end. You get to take this rough piece of wood and make it smooth. But then, it takes forever. Then you're constantly having to search for that one little spot you missed because your hands never lie to you. You rub your hands up and down, you might feel that one little spot and then you have to redo the whole sanding process again. And for my process, it starts at 40, 80, 120 grit, 280 grit, 320 grit, and I'll go up to 400 sometimes on a really nice wall hanger. I always, I love oiling up a handle, but when the only salvageable clip is this angle, and you're trying to show off how nice the wood is after oiling it, it can be really weird. So once the axe was done, I stood back and looked at this thing and was shocked at how it turned out. Not that I had doubts, but it's just a lot more beautiful than I thought it was gonna be. So I hollered at my buddy Nikki and she allowed me to go into the studio and take amazing photos of this thing. And here you have it, handle number 30 complete. This was one of my favorite projects of all time. At this point, after making the video months later, I've already got another project lined up that I think you guys are gonna love. So please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more.